Hi, welcome to today's piece of peace. Started off today and um, want to open us up with prayer. Lord Jesus, um, we just thank you that we're capable of coming into your presence, that you never leave us. That every moment of our life, either waking or sleeping, you are with us. We come before you this time to read your word, to talk about your movement in our lives, and to dig deep into our, um, our practice of practicing your presence. So God, just open us up to you today and um, let this word come alive and help it to refine us, help it to deepen our faith walk, and let you be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this morning again, these last couple days, as I'm contemplating, as I was sitting with God this morning, these last couple days have been um, insightful, have caused me to deepen my closeness to my King and seek out His discernment, seek out His direction, and trials in our life have a way of doing that they can either push us away from god if we choose that route and we go off on our own trying to figure it out and that is painful and unproductive and um, what is good about trials in our lives is that the lord uses that to refine us he uses it to draw us closer to him and to realize that we aren't necessarily in control of everything, um, but he knows exactly what's going on. It helps build our trust in him. So I was journaling for the last couple days about trials and um, needing his discernment, needing his direction, um, more so when things are harder. Seeking counsel in some dear and deep friends who are sold out for Jesus and in his word and and choose to live a lifestyle of putting to practice what he's teaching them so they can build their foundations on us they can build their lives on a solid foundation he also uses trials to prune us like to bring up how we function and where we go to and what we do with it and how he wants to just prune that off of us so that he's the one we're always going to and then he gives us practice time with that so trials come about so that we can practice coming into his presence we can practice depending on him we can practice giving our trust to him proclaiming our trust in him we can practice handing things over our, our mindset or how we view things like lord let me see this from your perspective or god what are you doing here what do you want of me you know and then just putting these discernment pieces out and letting him guide us and listening intently and and he helps us navigate through things. He prunes us. He refines us. And it is a beautiful process because in the end, we become more like him and less like us. More on earth as it is in heaven. More of the beauty of heaven. More of the masculine strength of heaven. More of the feminine nurturing of heaven. More, more of God's glory rather than us. And so it's hard, but it's really good. And I feel sad for people who don't dig into the word and who don't inquire of God and who don't seek his beauty and don't lean into him because that would be an empty and purpose, purposeless life. If you're trying to just do what, what you want to do until you die and then what? I think this is a purposeful life coming to be more and more and more like Christ on a daily basis. So that brought me into our devotion today, which happens to be written by Adam Holtz. This is out of Our Daily Bread. You can order these books online. You can have them sent to your home. They have an app for your smartphones. You can download the app. But today we're going to be reading out of John 15, 1 through 12, and it's titled Prune, Pruned to Thrive. So let's start. Um, in my NIV Bible, this is titled um, The Vine and the Branches. So here we go. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. 
he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Think about that for a minute. If God is the gardener and Jesus is the vine, and if we're, if we're hanging on to Jesus, staying close to Jesus, crafted into his vine, then we should be producing fruit. And if we're not, are we truly crafted into his vine? Hmm. What will happen? He says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why do we do that to our trees? Because it helps the tree take, instead of carrying on, the, trying to supply food and, and nutrients to a branch that's doing nothing, it's going to cut it off so that the nutrients can go to the plants that actually are producing fruit. Think about that for a minute. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So it doesn't like he just leaves it. He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Hmm, think about that. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Look at what he says first there. He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. It doesn't mean go off and do whatever you want and I'm going to remain with you. He says, remain in me. Stay close to me and I will remain in you. This is an act of our will and an action, not just a thought. It's an action, remaining in him. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. So if you're off on your own, you're not going to be bearing fruit. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So you might have a life where you say, I follow Jesus, but you spend no time with him and you don't read your word and you're not in prayer and you're not sacrificing your life and you're not growing and you're not producing any kind of fruit. Are you really remaining in him? No. This is an action. This is an action. It is remaining in him, choosing to prioritize portions of our lives, to seek him, to stay close to him, to listen to him when he's pruning us, when he's refining us, to listen to what he's saying and acting on it right away, obeying it right away, because then we're building our foundation on solid ground, not on the sand when torrents come and it takes it away. But we'll be able to stand because we're remaining in him and we're producing fruit. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and I will give it to, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Hear that. How much do you think the Father loves Jesus? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And um, Adam writes, as I watched a bumblebee land lightly on a Russian sage, I marveled at the bush's lush branches exploding with color. Its brilliant blue blossoms attracted eyes and bees alike. Yet only last fall, I wondered if it would ever blossom again. When my wife's parents trimmed the periwinkle plant down to a stub, I assumed they decided to get rid of it. But now I was witnessing the radiant results of pruning that had seemed brutal to me. This, 
the surprising beauty that results from harsh cuts may be one of the reasons Jesus chose pruning imagery to describe God's work among believers. In John 15, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch that does, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Jesus' words remind us that in the good times and bad, God is always working in us towards spiritual renewal and fruitfulness. During pruning seasons or suffering or emotional barrenness, we may wonder if we'll ever thrive again. But Christ encourages us to continue to stick close to him. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. As we continually draw spiritual nourishment from Jesus, the resulting beauty and fruitfulness in our lives will show the world God's goodness. Adam's charge was this. How have you seen God use struggles in your life to produce growth and fruitfulness? Write those down. How do you think time gives us the pers- how do you think time gives us a perspective to see God's hands at work? In our lives. Like some of the things that I see is that he gives me opportunity over and over again through my trials to take my thoughts captive and give them to him, to practice not being judgmental and 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 praying for those that wound me, and praying for those that don't know me, and praying for those that judge me, and and getting that instead of having Thoughts of people ruminate in my mind and place judgments on them, which is God's job, not mine. He's judge. He says, pray for your enemies. So I pray for them. And um, and I get to rest in his peace then because I know he's in charge and I know I'm humbled and I know I'm in his presence. But he gives me time and time and time again to practice that And it means there's trials and trials and trials and trials so that I can be forgiving and I can hand things over to him for for him to be the judge and not me. And that gives me peace. And I don't know what yours is. What is it that he brings up in your life over and over again that he's refining and pruning so that you can produce more beauty and more fruit in your life as well? That brought me to Jesus Calling. Sarah Young's book, you can order that online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us, and we'll read what today says. Today is February 2nd. Hard to believe that already. And it reads, I am renewing your mind. Of course he is. When your thoughts flow freely, they tend to move toward problems. Your focus gets snagged on a given problem circling around and around in its attempts to gain mastery. (laughs) Have you ever been there? Where you've ruminated on something that's happened and you keep sitting in that negative, how you would have responded, what would have been a previous response, if you could have only talked to the person that you'll never have that conversation with. Um, Yeah, so it says, your energy is drained away from other matters through this negative focus. Worst of all, you lose sight of me. A renewed mind is present is the a renewed mind is presence focused god's presence focused train your mind to seek me in every moment every situation sometimes you can find me in the surroundings a lilting bird song a loved one smile golden sunlight at other times you must draw inward to find me I am always present in your spirit. Seek my face, speak to me, and I will light up your mind. And that is today's piece of peace. God bless you.